what's up everybody and welcome back to my channel on today's video i've learned a lot on this road trip you know i've heard so many net negative things about you know i mean I, I learned so much on this trip that i think it's life-changing almost i think one of the biggest things that i've learned is that you cannot believe everything you've been hearing you know on so many different levels for example let's take california i've never been to california um you know people told me there was a lot of gangs. You couldn't wear certain colors in LA. You know, I was scared to go to Los Angeles. Like, I was literally afraid. And I've been to Detroit. I've been to St. Louis at night. Uh, I've been to, like, some horrendous places. And I was terrified of going to Los Angeles. Now, I believe in statistics a lot. And I'm looking at, you know, crime rates and stuff. And it doesn't really look like Los Angeles is that dangerous on paper. It's not. Every, I mean, you hear people are leaving California, going to Texas, going here, going there. People leave, you know, California is like the biggest state by population other than Texas and Florida. New York, those are like the biggest states by population. So, of course, more people are going to be leaving California than anywhere else. It's also the most expensive state in the lower 48, I believe. So, it's also not for everybody. West Virginia, it's the cheapest state. It's the least desirable state. And as somebody who's traveled now, let's see, 31 states, I've lost track. We're over 30 states for sure. Um, when a place is undesirable, it sucks. And the real estate values are low. When a place is expensive, there's a reason it's expensive. That means people need or want to be there. So, you know, I hear all these negative things about California. It was the most incredible travel experience that I've had so far. And Katie will tell you the same exact thing. That means I have 30 some states that we've been in. California has been the most exciting to visit. Um, they have the most beautiful natural scenery we've seen. Uh, we saw the most wildlife. Um, we saw the redwoods. We crossed the iconic places like, uh, you know, the bridge, the um, Golden Gate Bridge. We got to see um, elephant seals. We got to see sea lions. We got to see over 40 whales, different species of dolphins we hadn't seen yet. The, the, the redwood forest was incredible. And we didn't even get to see the biggest ones. We just got to see, you know, what's by the side of the road. Um, but anyways, California was the most beautiful uh, road trip experience I've been to, you know. Then we heard Los Angeles, like, you know, oh, it's super dangerous. You can't wear certain colors. You can't, oh, Los Angeles, you're just, uh, just the most crime ridden place on earth. But I went to Compton at night. I went to Englewood, Compton. I went into um, every territory you could think of, from Grape Street, uh, East L.A. Like, every place supposedly you're not supposed to go to. Grandshaw. We did all that. Nobody bothered me. And then they say you couldn't wear this color in Los Angeles. You can't wear... I wore those colors in Los Angeles. Nobody bothered me. In fact, I actually think I got a little bit of respect from the locals. Because they know that you're not taking in the BS. So, yes, I did wear a few things that I knew specifically you can't wear. What you really don't want to wear in Los Angeles are the ball caps. But, like, dude, they know the difference between, like, somebody who's active and somebody who's a tourist. Like, you know, there's so much misinformation. Um, I enjoyed San Francisco and San Diego more than Los Angeles. I think Los Angeles is a little bit overrated, but I, I like the experience of living in Los Angeles would probably be better than because it makes more sense. That it's more better laid out than if I had to live there, I'd probably go for the Los Angeles area. You know, I said rents were really expensive. Rents in California are about the same as rents in Florida, believe it or not. Um, we're roughly the same. Not much of a difference, uh, at least in the part of Florida that I'm living. So no, Los Angeles is not the end of the world. It's not the most dangerous thing in the world. It's statistically, it's not, and in real life, it's not. And I enjoy California. You know, I heard these horrible things about Los Angeles, and I can tell you that I really enjoy Los Angeles. Um, and and like the whole experience of California was to me incredible. You know, San Francisco. We all know what San Francisco's known for, but did you know that the biggest a uh, cultural um, thing that I took from San Francisco wasn't uh, that. It was actually 
the Chinese people, like, and the, and the Asian people, like, what really, um, you know, they told me San Francisco was a rainbow city, and I didn't see a, there was a small little rainbow community, there was a big rainbow monument, but, like, I didn't see, like, I think Los Angeles, or Atlanta, or Tampa, or Orlando, and Florida, or West Palm, it's like any other large city, really, if you think about it, it's really not that much, Maybe statistically, but I guess they might not. They might just be like, they're not making a statement about it. A lot of people like maybe statistically there's more, but as far as like in and around town, like what really like caught me like my surprise about San Francisco was how Asian that city is, and the Chinatown was amazing, and just like people told me horrendous things about um, Los Angeles, I also heard horrendous things about San Francisco. Oh, they're gonna break in your car. Uh, they're gonna you know, guys. Both, unfortunately, not only is the or is the media doing a dog's turd job of covering the real like the real situation in American cities. Unfortunately, YouTubers are hopping on the media bandwagon. Um, I used to think that YouTubers would have their own freelance, um, just their own uh, creative edge, and they wouldn't fall for mainstream um, generalizations. But unfortunately. A lot of YouTubers, um, especially in the field that I'm in, are running with this whole mainstream um, package of kind of talking down on large cities and spreading these narratives that are very misleading. But at the end of the day, I really enjoyed San Francisco, um, and it wasn't like that over the top. I met people on the outskirts of San Francisco, like a waitress at a restaurant, and what she said was so wrong, so horrendous. In the first, I, I've lived here for 20 years. So when somebody says that, you automatically think they know everything about that place. But when somebody says I live somewhere for 20 years, what they're actually saying is I am as narrow minded as it gets. I haven't explored the world. So I have nothing to compare it to other than my own preconceived notions. So uh, having a local tell you I've lived here 20 years, that's probably the last thing you want to hear. Because uh, I used to be that person that would say I lived here 20 years. So uh, that actually made me a narrow minded person more than anything. Now that I've seen more places, I can say that who I was, you know, three or four years ago was definitely not a more educated person than who I am today after traveling so much. Um, so, you know, there was this narrative about California that it was this horrendous place, that all these bad things were going to happen. Look, going to California was probably the best travel experience I had in the United States, both culturally, scenically, um, it actually expanded my mind in a lot of ways. Um, I understand the world a lot better now that I've seen California. And I think a lot of these people are, you know, say leaving California. Um, and I've helped a lot of those people that are leaving California. And they've told me why they're leaving. And I understand it. And I respect it. And that's their choice. Um, and I don't disagree with them on a lot of stuff. But I do need you to understand that the vast majority of people that are leaving California, I don't see Asians leaving California. I don't see Hispanics leaving California. Who's leaving California? I've never ran into a Korean or a Lebanese person or a Mexican or anybody else who makes up these huge portions of the California population. I've never seen like a Vietnamese guy pop up in Florida say I'm leaving California. Um, if you were to break down why it's like that, it's probably because people believe the rhetorics that they're being pushed on all different types of media. And they're narrow-minded, and, you know, um, but I don't see Vietnamese people leaving California. I don't see, and I talk to people. I talk to Vietnamese people. I talk to uh, people from Lebanon, Syria, um, Armenians, just like every, like, there's everything down there. And I mean, like, there's real diversity. I don't even know what some countries these people are from because I don't want to be rude and ask them where they're from. A few of the people that I talk to, I'm going to assume were from an Arab background. But I didn't ask them where they're from. I, I used to do that a lot. And it, it's a really stupid uh, thing to do. You know, you meet people. And if where they're from becomes relevant enough in the conversation, then you'll find out at the due time. But you don't ask people where they're from. Um, anyways, so I, I don't I know their backgrounds. I'm assuming I talked to a lot of Vietnamese, Koreans. Um, I've talked to uh, maybe Lebanese, Syrians, Iraqis. I don't know where they're from, but I do know this. I talk to them a lot, 
and I'm talking in uh, stores, parking lots, businesses, hotels, um, late night outside a gas late night outside of a gas station. I talk to a lot of people in my time in California, and they have no intentions of leaving California. The vast majority of people in California that I talk to, especially those that were from other countries, are extremely pleased with their life in California. Some of them told me they worked three jobs, and they told me they've lived in Georgia, they've lived in Tennessee, they've lived in Arkansas, and they have no desire to live in those types of places because the same reasons you've heard me mention in the past, so there's no need to repeat it. I talked to one dude that was Arabic, and he told me um, a few of the places he lived in, places that I'm familiar with, and uh, that I go through a lot, and he told me, I would rather work five jobs and get three hours of sleep and be in California. And I'm not going to tell you California is perfect because it's not. They have their fair share of individuals in California, just like they do anywhere else in the country. So when you look at the demographics of who is leaving California, it's not young white people. It's, it's not young black people. It's old white people who, by the way, are leaving with what they call cashing out. It means... They bought a house for five hundred dollars for eight hundred. They're taking three hundred thousand dollars to Arkansas to buy a house cash, and it's not Arabs doing this. It's not Latinos doing this. It's not Asians doing this. It is purely older white people are the ones that are leaving California. I talk to a lot of young white people in California, and their concerns are more about the ideology of the government and policies, and that does concern a lot of people in California. It's not the economy, it's not the crime, it's not that they're going to break into your car, it's just they don't like the ideology and how the ideology of the politics has worked its way into law, schools, and a few other so topics that we're not going to avoid because this channel is not about politics. But it's, it's clear that it's impossible to make everybody happy. So all this talk that I've heard about California being a horrendous place, if right now I had half a million dollars in the bank, I guarantee you I would most likely be living in California or Florida. But it's not a place for poor people. Okay, so it's not a place for people that are retiring either. So once you're in your retirement age, um, you know, that's why I said it's mostly older white people that are leaving because of their retirement. They're cashing out their equity that they made in California, they should be happy that California will let them make that equity because if you bought a house in Alabama, you don't have $400,000 in equity. Your house ain't worth $400,000. So they ought to be thankful that the place that they are from appreciated so much because if they had bought a house in uh, Arkansas 30 years ago, they wouldn't be sitting on too much money. So they can't really complain too much about California because they're leaving with a crap load of money that they wouldn't have made in some other state. I know that for a fact. Older people from other nationalities that are retiring know that they can't go retire in Arkansas. So they have to stay there and they might work out something with their kids or grandkids so it benefits everybody because they know they can't just leave California because they know what's going to happen to them. On the news was El Paso. They said on the news, several news outlets said, that there's thousands of people sleeping on the streets of El Paso. Now, I went to El Paso, and I drove around El Paso three weeks ago extensively, and I drove around, or two weeks ago extensively, and I drove around El Paso yesterday extensively. There are not thousands of people sleeping in the streets of El Paso. It's a lie. I talked to a U.S. Customs spokesperson, and he said that the people are being processed. They're not jumping the fence illegally and flash mobbing the streets. There is a section of the fence where they can walk up to the fence and then they get processed. And they either get sent back through the same hole or they um, are um, not literally, but you get the idea. They're either sent back over or they're processed for a political asylum case. So um, it's a very organized thing. Yes, there's thousands of people there. But they are being processed one by one in an orderly fashion. They're not just jumping over and sleeping on the streets of El Paso. And we drove extensively through El Paso. Um, there's like 600,000 people in El Paso. So one out of 600 would be, if, if their statement was true, about one out of 600 people would be like that. And we drove around El Paso extensively. 
<laughs> I mean, you guys saw, I did like two hours of video on purpose. We recorded the highways, the main streets, by the border. We did all that. There are no thousands of people in El Paso. So, you know what you have to do, people? Is don't believe everything you hear on TV. Don't believe the TV. Don't believe the news. Don't even believe YouTubers. Go out there and see the world for yourself. I saw California for myself. I don't have to tell you everything that I learned from going to California. For one, the truth is not popular. For two, it offends people. And three, it doesn't make you popular. And I know that just by saying some of the things I've said, I got people sitting at home right now like, Man, Jose, I can't believe you would say that, man. You're turning into a California baby, aren't you? Get out there and see the world for yourself. Because both that article was misleading, all the YouTube videos that I had seen were misleading, a lot, everything that I saw about California was misleading, okay? My personal opinion is this is a beautiful place, and if I ever had enough money, that's where I would live. Just like I would say the same thing about South Florida. It's, it's a beautiful place, and if I had enough money, I would live there. If my California videos do better than all the other videos that I've done, I'm not going to know that right away. It takes a while to figure that out. But if all of a sudden my California videos do incredible more than any of my other videos and I make good money off of it and my income continues to grow, I think you have to make about $150,000 to live on that coast comfortably. If I was making that kind of money, I would definitely move to California for a year just to try it out. It is true that there is an overwhelming amount of homeless people in California. But here's what they don't tell you, okay, about that situation. Yes, there's homeless. It will be shocking to you how many homeless people there are. But... A, a California homeless person is not a Newport Ritchie, Florida homeless person, okay? A California homeless person is almost a lifestyle choice. It's not like they... First of all, the weather is perfect. And you could not be... There aren't too many homeless in Phoenix. You know why? Because it gets to be 120 degrees. Who the crap would want to be homeless there? You know, and they want to make it a political thing. And it's not true. There's a lot of places that are Republican, like Kentucky. Um, I don't know if Nevada, which way they swing, but they have the same problem. Um, look at Lexington, Kentucky. You want to talk about a city with a homeless problem? Columbus, Ohio. Um, no, uh, th there's no uh, real correlation there. And they want to make it seem like there's a correlation because they're trying to, trying to drive home political points. But you have got to stop listening to both CNN, Fox News, all that crap. Turn that crap off, man. I mean, look at... They're reporting all these homeless people sleeping on the streets of El Paso. Dude, we were there before the situation and after the situation. It's the same El Paso. It's not true. And most of... Like, just to expound on how like misleading that article was, um, most of the migrants are Cuban or Venezuelan. If you made it from Cuba or Venezuela to El Paso... You are not going to just, here's somebody who, just so you understand how, how misleading and how, uh, how dumb and people watch that, believe it. And they think it's real. You know, uh, these people have millions of people that watch their news networks and they watch that and they think it's real, which is like, now there's millions of people that are watching this. And those people live in a small town in Florida, small town in Arkansas, small town in Ohio, and they see this garbage and they believe it and they can't afford to go to these places and see it for themselves to know that it's a pile of crap. But just so you understand, if you're Cuban and you made it from Cuba to El Paso, you can afford to get to Florida or New York or Chicago or Houston, or wherever your family's at, you're not going to stay in El Paso. In fact, the officials in Texas will tell you that the border towns have, like, the highest percentage of, like, U.S. citizens of anywhere in the country, because if you cross over here illegally or illegally, you are not going to stay around the border. You're going to get as far away from that border as you could, because the things that you experience on the other side are so horrendous, you're not staying there. And uh, the, the officials in Texas will be the first ones to tell you that. They're proud of that, actually. They're proud of their statistics. If a Cuban or a Venezuelan made it all the way to El Paso, bro, they're not going to be all of a sudden broke when they cross that border. They came across like 12 different countries. 
they are going to have enough money to get, like, across the United States on a bus, believe it. Um, or have somebody pick them up, or be flown to Miami, or something, okay? Uh, yeah, if you made it that far, you are not just landing there with nothing. Because one of those ones that made it through 12 different countries to get there or something ridiculous, you have no idea how they get there. Uh, yeah, they are going to not stay in El Paso. So, even if they, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... They make it seem like there's all these people that are landing in El Paso and now they're homeless and they have nowhere to go. No, these people made it across 12 countries. They're going to make it outside of the city of El Paso. That's actually the easy part of the journey. Guatemala is the hard part of the journey. Uh, Mexico is the hard part of the journey. Um, all these other little countries uh, crossing uh, the jungle between Colombia and Panama that is the difficult part of the journey. Once you're in El Paso, you're not just going to make it across 12 countries and all of a sudden you're in El Paso and you're like, well, I'm here. No, that's not going to happen. Um, It's just unbelievable that people see this. They don't know anything. They're just dumb and gullible and they believe everything they see and, and, and they take advantage of that to feed them whatever garbage they want. But I don't want you. You've got to expand your brain beyond what is on that TV screen. You have got to get out there and see things for yourself. I think one of the biggest traps uh, that the United States has is that people are so stagnant from their jobs to the house and in front of the house. Like I was saying, some of these hotels where there's, instead of one TV, there's like three TVs in the hotel room. And it's just, that's like, uh, like that's the only like window you have to the outside world to TV. And they control it, man. It's, it's uh, you know, and the same thing with your cell phone. It's, it's just a window to the world. Um, like I go on my phone and all I see are cars and cars and cars. And it just makes you want to go out there and buy a car or something, you know? Um, and you have to remind yourself, no, 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 no. I would definitely say that this trip, uh, expanded my mind, opened my mind, um, and that you should travel. Don't believe all the bad things you hear about California. Los Angeles is not as dangerous as they're portraying. There's a lot of YouTubers out there saying, uh, it's dangerous. That's their perspective. They don't know what dangerous really is. Nobody bothered me in Los Angeles for wearing the wrong stuff. I was inside of stores buying clothes next to people who are clearly gang members. And I was buying and looking at all the wrong stuff. And they said nothing about it. They look at you. They know you're an outsider or a tourist. And they don't care. Nobody stole our car. Nobody broke my window to take our luggage. None of that crap, man. Like, I can't even believe how these narratives are being passed around about these places. And if it wasn't for another, you know, if it wasn't for me traveling and seeing it for myself, I would believe every last bit of it. Don't believe everything you hear. Go out there and travel and see it for yourself. What is true is that there's a lot of homeless people out there, but the weather is perfect. They're not the same type of homeless people you're going to find in Florida. I'll tell you that much. Florida homeless people are burnt the crap out. California homeless people is a lifestyle choice. So you have to understand. And they're not out there begging. Okay, there's like less percentage of, they're very little percentage of beggars. They're not out there begging. They're just like sleeping on a sidewalk, you know, doing tattoos for people and hanging out with their homies. It's not this um, nightmare situation. So no, absolutely not. Um, go, you have to see it to understand it. So, you know. Don't take my word for it. Another last thing I want to say, I just did a video on Odessa, Texas. You guys got to recognize when we're in character. We do a lot of satire comedy, and I have to trip the auger room. The only way to trip the auger room is by getting people that are locals to comment. So, like, I've seen, like, my subscribers that were my subscribers when I go to their town, and then they get mad at me and say that they're going to unsubscribe because I didn't like their town. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. If I don't like your town, I'm sorry. Like, in western Texas, I have a huge following out of western Texas. A very loyal following and now they're all getting mad at me because they don't i don't like their towns well guess what you want me to lie about me not liking your town at the end of the day i like big cities places that have everything accessible when i travel i can stay in new hotels go to good restaurants if i go to a place and the restaurants suck the hotels are old and full of cockroaches and there are everything's closed at six o'clock at night dude i'm probably not gonna like your town does that mean i hate you as a person i want you to unsubscribe i don't but you can't expect me to lie and not tell you that I, I, all of a sudden I have to like pretend I like a town because whatever. No, I'm not. I don't like it. And I'm sorry if it hurts your feelings. I want you to continue being my subscriber. If I go to your town and you don't like what I have to say about it, that's just my opinion. You know what I mean? 
like you could have a different opinion so that's it